What an amazing morning, church family, just to be able to celebrate with nine people who uh, got baptized today and just declared publicly their love for Jesus and their desire to live for him and him alone. It is awesome. So blessed and encouraged just to see our church family respond and to just enjoy what God has been doing here this morning. Um, I just want to dive into week three of our Abide series. I just want to open in a word of prayer and then we're going to dive right in. Lord, we thank you for this awesome time that we can be together and celebrate what you are doing, not only in the lives of these nine people, Lord, but in our church family as a whole. God, we are just so grateful for all that you're doing, for all that you are uh, doing to, to teach us, Lord, the importance of abiding in your love, to abide in your word. And Lord, what we're going to talk about today is to abide in your presence, Lord. And so, Father, I pray that you'd be with me today. Help me, inspire me to express your heart to your church family today. God, I give you praise for that in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. For those that have been around the last two weeks, we've been talking about abide and the meaning of abide. And uh, Again, it's not a word that we naturally use in our uh, vocabulary today, um, but it is a very important word in scripture. As a matter of fact, Jesus himself devoted an entire chapter to really picking apart the meaning of this word and why it is so important. Um, so again, just by way of reminder for those that maybe are new here today, abide is an action word. It's a verb. Um, it speaks about intentionality. It's not a word that is passive in any way. The second thing is this. It's also a relational word. It talks about who you are connected to. And I want you to know that these nine people that got baptized here today, they know who they're connected to. And if I could add one other thought, they know who they want to do life with for the rest of their life. And that's Jesus Christ. And so I am just so excited not only today to talk a little bit more about this concept of abide. Um, but I want you to understand today that no matter where you're at, you may have heard the testimonies of the baptism candidates here this morning. And maybe just inspired by that. But I want you to know today, church, that they are here today because they've been touched by the presence of God. That is why they're here. That is why they're giving testimony. And I don't know about you, there's nothing like one moment in the presence of God because one moment in the presence of God can transform a life. And we believe that as a church family. There's a number of people in scripture uh, that had pretty amazing divine encounters. Many people. And I was kind of honing in on, okay, which, which one should I land on? Who should I focus on? And I decided to focus in on Moses. I think uh, he's got such a unique story in the Old Testament. And uh, to say that he had a divine encounter would be the understatement of the year. Uh, his divine encounter happened on the backside of the desert while he was taking care of uh, his father-in-law, Jethro's sheep. Uh, he came across this area in the Mount Sinai region where he saw a bush on fire, but yet was not being consumed. And when he came and approached this bush, um, something very, very strange happened. Uh, not only did he see a bush that was being uh, basically on fire, but not being consumed, but he also heard the voice of the Lord come from that. And in Exodus chapter three, verse four starts this story for us. It says this, when the Lord saw that he'd gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses and Moses said, here I am. And I think it's, there's so many little things that we could kind of hit, hone in on with that particular thought. But one of the things that has blessed me so much about these nine candidates that got baptized this morning is that there was a moment in their life where God knocked on the door of their heart and they simply responded and said, here am I. Lord, I want to live for you. I want to be touched by you. The reality is with this divine encounter in Exodus chapter 3, Moses' life would never be the same again. And my heart's prayer for each and every one of you that is here in person today and those watching online that you would understand beyond a shadow of a doubt that God desires to encounter you, to have a moment with you that would last a lifetime. A moment in his presence can transform your life and we believe that with all of our hearts. But some, some pretty key things happened in this encounter with Moses and God. First of all, in verse 5, it talks about God revealing himself to Moses as a holy, all-powerful God. And you need to know today that when we abide in his presence, you have a holy, all-powerful God that is on your side, working on your behalf and wanting to do amazing things. God also revealed his heart to Moses and his people. 
in verse uh, 6 to 9. And then I love verse 10. It talks about revealing the call or the mission of God for Moses' life. Then Moses, in verse 11, asks an incredibly important question. He says this. He says, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. I will be with you, church. Come on. I will be with you. The great I am will be with you. And so some of you here today, and you're like, oh, I just, you know, I'm really connected with that blanket illustration that God's love has wrapped me up and God's word has wrapped me up. And I get that and, and I want that. And some of you are in this place and you say, but I just don't feel God's presence some days. And my response to you is God desires not only for you to feel God's presence, but to live in his presence, to abide in his presence and to experience the best of his presence every single day of your life. But you've got to make up your mind, is God enough? Do you need something else? Is there something else that's drawing on your heart, that's trying to draw you closer, to draw you uh, into a place where you feel like that's what you need? Now, at the end of the day, Moses understood something very, very important in this divine encounter. Moses understood that God was all he needed. He didn't need anything else. And then in that moment, as Moses understood that God was the only thing that he needed, he revealed himself in a very personal way in verse 14. And it says this, God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent you. There's been many studies throughout the last number of years about the the actual word that's used here, the word Yahweh. Uh, which many Jews will understand is a very precious name, the only name of the Lord himself. But it means at its core that he is the self-existent one. He's the all-powerful one. God doesn't need anything to sustain him or anyone to sustain him. God is above everything because he is everything. God is all-powerful. God is all-knowing. God is everywhere present. And God is everything that you will ever need. Let that sink in your heart right now. Let that just sink into your heart and and just take a hold of that here today. God is everything that you will ever need. God's presence then is so key. God's presence for your life is so key. You have to understand God's presence is everything to you. This was the revelation that Moses walked out the rest of his life. This is what he came back to. So when he had to confront Pharaoh multiple times and he was dealing with the difficulty of confronting a foreign king that had the power to kill him, guess what he rested in? He knew that God's presence was enough. When he made it to the Red Sea and saw the Red Sea in front of him and the nation of Egypt and their army coming against them from behind, what was, what was the thing that he rested in? God's presence is with me. When they crossed over the Red Sea and they started to face difficulty and betrayal and, and, and leadership mutiny and heartbreak and discouragement and disappointment and difficulty after difficulty after difficulty for the next 40 years of wandering in the wilderness, what did Moses come back to? His presence is all that I need. Mm. God's presence is all that we need. That's good. We know this because later on in the story, much many, many, many years later in this particular uh, story while they were in the wilderness, there was a moment where God was considering not going with them. And Moses knew that if he doesn't have God, he's got nothing. And he cried out to God in the Exodus chapter 33, verse 15, and he said this, Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. Yeah. Moses understood that no matter what the difficulties were in life, no matter what they would face, no matter whatever would come their way, God's presence was all they needed. Yeah. God was all they needed. Good. And I do feel like, church, that some of us go through different circumstances and situations, and we actually feel like, we're God, God, where are you? And I believe with all of my heart, sometimes God takes us through these scenarios so that we come to the conclusion that that thing that we're looking for in the natural, that, that, that career, that friendship, that relationship, that whatever, this, that, and the other thing that we're desperate to find, we're actually getting to a point, God's allowing us to get to a point where we recognize it's never going to satisfy. It's never going to solve the issue of our heart. It's, not, it's never going to uh, create a solution for what we're ultimately longing for. 
because you are a child of the king and Come as on. a child of the king the only thing that you ever will need is his presence Come on. Moses got it abiding in God's presence was his lifeline Moses understood that it goes on in verse 16 and I want you to catch this actually has one of the most interesting questions I've ever seen in scripture verse 16 and it says how will anyone Know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us and catch this next one. This is huge. What else will distinguish me and your people from all the other people on the face of the earth? What will distinguish me from all other people on the face of the earth? Moses understood in that moment. That he was never called to fit in. He was called to stand out. Come on. But he was not called to stand out on his own merit and on his own wisdom and his own, his own experience. And the fact that he was raised in uh, Egypt and had Egypt uh, education and knowledge and cultural education and knowledge. No, none of that mattered. None of that mattered. Right. How do we stand out? It's because we're a people of his presence. Come on. We're a people of his presence, church. Come on. That's all that matters. We are a people of his presence. God, if your presence doesn't go with us, I'm not going nowhere. Because we realize without God, we are nothing. So what is going to distinguish us from everyone else? It's got to be God's presence. King David's worship leader, Asaph, wrote a beautiful psalm, Psalm 73. And he has this line in here that I think is so key. He said this. But as for me, God's presence is all I need. Oh, come on, you get that? As for me, God's presence is all I need. I have made the sovereign Lord my shelter, and as I declare all the things you have done. Made me think as I was reading that psalm this week, where in the world did Asaph get that thought? Well, most likely the one he worked for, King David, because he was a man of God's presence. And King David wrote in Psalm 16, he says, I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. King David understood the presence of God. He understood it to such a degree that he was desperate to have the Ark of the Covenant because it represented God's presence in Jerusalem. He would do anything for that moment. King David understood it. Asaph understood it. Moses understood it. And I believe every one of us is on a journey to come to the place where we realize that the only thing we need is God's presence. Come on. So church family, you have to make up your mind today. Abide in God's presence. Let's don't go. abide in your own wisdom and your own knowledge. and Don't abide in your own ways of creating opportunity for yourself. No, you've got to make up your mind. Abide in God's presence. So good. When I come back to a verse we've been reading over the last two Sundays and I'm actually going to add in one more verse and it's going to show you the pattern here John 15 verses 9 to 11 as the father loved me I also have loved you abide in my love well there was week one love if you keep my commandments you will abide in my love just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love oh there's week two yeah. abide in God's word here's week three these things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. That's good. Presence. There is joy living in the presence of God. Yeah, come on. As a matter of fact, there's one verse, I don't have it on me, but there's one verse that talks about there's peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Which is talking about the presence of God in our lives. Maybe you're here today, maybe you're watching online and you're have tried to figure out your own life in many different ways. Maybe you've made some mistakes. Maybe you're experiencing some difficulties. Maybe, like many people over the last couple of years, you're feeling lost, discouraged, and lonely. Maybe the weight of this world feels overwhelming to you. Maybe you've lost your joy. Mm. I can tell you just from my own personal journey with the Lord is every time I was not pursuing and abiding in God's presence, it's like I lost my joy. Yeah. But when I'm in the presence of the Lord, I just feel the joy of the Lord coming out yeah. of me. But I want you to know today, church, the same invitation that God gave to Moses is available to you today. It's good. It's the invitation to God's presence. It's good. Abide in me 
and I will abide in you. But you have to respond. You can't just let it pass you by. You have to grab a hold of it. Take it to your very own. Take it to your heart. And live it out. Okay. I was thinking about this as I was preparing the message this week. If you were invited by the prime minister or the new king to have dinner, what would you do? The answer is you'd accept it probably right on the spot. Right. For some of you, you'd accept it because you just love the, the pomp and circumstance of having dinner with someone that's so, uh, so important. For some of you, you'd want to maybe ask them some questions. I don't know. Whatever it is for you. But I'm telling you right now that if a prime minister or a president or a king or a queen invited us personally to dinner, we would jump on it. We would say yes so before they even asked the question. So true. It would honestly be a chance of a lifetime. And today, God doesn't just offer you a chance of a lifetime. He offers you a chance of all eternity. Yeah, so good. Abide in Him, and He will abide in you. Not just today, not just tomorrow, not just next month, next week, or next year, or next decade. He's going to abide with you forever, for all eternity. But you have to make up your mind and accept yeah, His invitation, good. church. Come on. Come on. You have to accept His Come invitation. So Psalm 145, verse 18 says this, The Lord is close to everyone who calls out to Him, yeah. to all who call out to Him sincerely. He's just looking for an authentic response, church. Yeah. You may be in a situation yeah. right now where you're feeling pretty good. Hey, I've got my life figured out. I don't need God. Why? Trust me, I have news for you. I've been down that road before. It never ends up well. So you have to make up your mind, just like these nine baptism candidates made up their mind today and said, mm -hmm. yes, not just to God's love, yes, not just to obey obedience to God's word, but yes to living and abiding in the presence of yeah, God, not on, just today, but every single day of their life because they knew what their lifeline was. They knew where their life source was. It's not themselves. It's not their bright ideas. It's not their own creativity. It's Jesus himself. So God has a divine strategy for your success, church. It's to abide in him. So That's good. it. So good. Not just today. But for every day, mm. I want to pray for you, church family, and I want to encourage you, make up your mind to abide in God every single day of your life. God, I pray today, Lord, not just for those that have been baptized, those that have been able to experience this very beautiful and special service today. I pray today, Lord God, that you would do something supernatural in each and every one of our lives so that we would understand, oh God, that we have only one choice and it's a choice to choose you. Yes. God, I pray today that people would choose you. I pray today, Lord, that people would choose to abide in your love, to abide in your word and to abide in your presence because, Lord, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. Yes. So, Father, I pray fullness of joy over our church family and over every individual that is listening to this message online. I pray, Father, for the joy of the Lord to hit them where they're sitting, whether it's on a, a bus to work or whether it's on a train or a plane or whether it's at home, Lord, it doesn't matter to me, God. I just pray, Father God, that you would just pour out your presence and pour out your spirit with such joy and such blessing, oh God, that people would know, Lord, there is no other option for their life, that we cannot make a decision, we cannot go anywhere or do anything without the presence of God, Lord, it is our lifeline. We pray that in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for checking out this video today. I hope it blessed you. Follow us on social media or check out our main website at impactkingston.com to hear all about what we're doing.